welcome everybody to our Bee Condos and Bird Houses member workshop uh, brought to us by Fortis Alberta. And this uh, workshop falls under our environment and healthy living pillar, which we will talk about in a second. Uh, but I would like to start with uh, the 4-H pledge. So if everybody can stand up with me and we'll do the pledge together. Okay, thank you all for standing. I pledge my head to clearer thinking, my heart to greater loyalty, my hands to larger service, and my health to better living for my club, my community, my country, and my world. Okay, oh, gotta roll my chair back in. Thank you, everybody. So as I said already, that our Bee House and Bird Condo Workshop is brought to us by Fortis Alberta. We'd like to express our sincerest appreciation to Fortis Alberta, whose support has made this wonderful workshop possible. Thank you so much. And um, today, we, as a lot of you know, because you've been on our other um, workshops that we've done, uh, we've gone through all th or three of our leadership development pillars already. And today, uh, we are going to go over our this workshop falls under our environment and healthy living pillar. Um, so we're going to have a few discussion questions to kind of start us off thinking about the environment and then I'm going to pass uh, the floor over to our great speaker for today who's going to talk about bee condos and bird houses. So um, as you might already know, or you might already be a part of it, we have three uh, member activity classrooms that match all of the three pillars we've done so far. And now there is a fourth activity classroom that you can join on Google Classroom. And I sent the link to you in an email, and I will send it again after this session in an email. Um, for our environment and healthy living. So there's going to be the resources we talk about today, as well as a fun design challenge where you'll have an opportunity to win the materials to build a bee condo and a birdhouse. So that's all gonna be in the classroom. If you're having any difficulties joining the classroom, you can always reach out to me over email. Um, and we can also talk about it more at the end if you have questions about that. So I wanna start with a easy discussion question that you can type your answers in the chat. Uh, what's the first thing that comes to mind when you read the environment? So when you see this word, the environment, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? You can type your answers in the chat there. The world, yeah, that's a good one. Trees, awesome. Yep, forests and nature, plants. Awesome. Yeah, it sounds like you all have really good like nature world animals. Yep. Kind of outdoors. That's great. Rocky Mountains. That's a good one. Farming. Love to hear it. Air. Yeah, for sure. Nature photos. Me and the tractor. That's awesome. That's a good memory. It sounds like to be the environment things around us. Great, you guys. Okay, so I have one another one. Uh, what's the first thing that comes to mind when you see the environment in Alberta? So when you read the environment in Alberta, what are some things that come to mind? Crops, yeah, that's a good one. Wild rose, that's a good one. Fields, cows, for sure. Cattle, Rocky Mountains, cats, farming, awesome. I love all the farming. Rolling hills, yeah, for sure. Forest, farming, animals in Alberta. I like the cats. That's awesome. Great. Yeah, we I definitely have some outdoor cats that are basically wildlife. School. Nice. Some school. Yeah, maybe you learned about it in school. Okay, so then the next one um, is what about the environment in 4-H? So what do you what comes to mind when you think about that? Could be any projects or anything you do. Highway cleanup. Yeah, that's a great one. Awesome. Leadership, beef. Yeah. People friendly. Wow, you guys have so many great ideas. Healthy living, heifer project. I love hearing about your projects. That's awesome. Animals, horses, speeches. Yeah, we actually get quite a few speeches about the environment and things like that. So that's a good one too. Yeah, nice, all the projects. Okay, so we have, now that we're kind of in this, our final discussion question is, uh, what are some 4-H projects that you could do that would fit under the environment and healthy living pillar? So even if what, there are ones that you do or ones that you think would be really good under the pillar, like some things that you haven't tried but would be a good project. Beef, goats, yes, for sure. 
those definitely fit under the environment. Hot flowers, shoes, highway cleanup, hiking, that's a good one. Tomology, yep. Beekeeping, chickens, animal projects, hiking. Yeah, so this is awesome. Sounds like you guys are all in really good projects too and have some good ideas. So a lot of, this is kind of a bit of a trick question because you can almost fit most of our projects under this pillar or there is an aspect of the project that can fit under this pillar. So um, my point here is just that 4-H is really closely related to the environment and healthy living and being a part of 4-H, um, you're already pretty actively involved in in working with the environment and learning about it. So tonight we're going to um, dive a little deeper into some wildlife conservation with some little critters that maybe you haven't thought about before or you don't know about. I certainly didn't know about some of them before we started. Um, and with that, we're gonna start with a poll. So this is just a little, it's a fun little quiz. Don't worry if you don't know the answers. I didn't know the answers before I made this quiz. So I won't be, um, it's not a big deal if you don't know. So we're gonna do a little bee and bird quiz. So let me just get my poll up so that you guys can answer this. Um, all right, so you guys can answer this poll and see if you know what the answer is. No pressure, I'll give you guys a minute or so to do it and then maybe 30 seconds, we'll see how quick you all are. Awesome, just a few more of you have to vote, so go in and vote now. Ah, oh, you guys are doing great. Okay, just 10 more seconds, so get your vote in if you haven't yet. Awesome, okay. Um, so here's our results. So everyone said a masked bee, or not everyone, but the majority of you said a masked bee, uh, which is uh, very impressive because it is a masked bee. <laughs> so I didn't know that. So you guys are doing uh, better than <laughs> better than I would have done right off the bat. So good, good job, everybody. And it's kind of hard to tell to you because I've never personally, and I don't know about some of you, I've never looked at a bee super up close because I'm I'm not scared of bees, but I just leave, give them their space, you know? So it's interesting to know about all the different types. Um, let's go to our next one here. So this is our second bee. What type of bee is this? You can answer this poll. Give you guys a few seconds. Okay, there's just a few more of you who have to vote, so we'll just wait a couple more seconds and then we can end it off. Great. Okay, I'm going to share the results. All right, so most of you said it was a leaf cutter bee, but there is quite a few of you who also said it's a honey bee, and it does look um, a lot like a honey bee if you've ever had honey bees on your farm. Um, and I don't know what a carpenter bee looks like. I know they exist, but I don't know what they look like. So maybe they look like that too. Um, all right, so it's a leaf cutter bee. And um, yeah, like I said, they do actually look quite a bit like a honey bee, but it is a different type of bee. So our next poll is a bird. What type of bird is this? So I will get our poll for going for this one. You guys are doing great on this. <laughs> and thank you for, for guessing, even if you're not sure, it's a good time to learn. I had to learn all these and I think it's really interesting. If you can't see the photo, I don't know how your screen is set up, but sometimes you can move the polling box off of your photo. Right, and um, I'll, try, I'll try and leave the photo up for a little and then open the poll just so yeah. that 
you guys can see, but if you can drag the polling box off of the photo, you usually can do that as well. Okay, I'm gonna end the polling for this. Um, so yeah, most of you said uh, Bluebird. Um, but we had quite a, quite a few other responses in the other categories as well. So let's see. Um, and it is a Western bluebird. So there's actually a couple of different types of bluebirds uh, out there, but this one specifically is a Western bluebird. Um, so you could keep an eye out for it. I know I've seen them around here before, so uh, something to keep watch for. And then our last one before we get into our um, workshop is what type of bird is this. So take a look at it in case your poll um, blocks it once I launch it. Okay, just a few more seconds. Okay, I'm gonna end this and we'll share the results. Okay, so most of you said uh, that this one was a blue jay. Um, I actually, I didn't know what this one was too. We have quite a few for swallow as well, not as many for bluebird and robin. Let's see what it is. It's actually a tree swallow. So I think it does look like a blue jay too, but it's a tree swallow. So I didn't know that they were blue, very interesting. Um, so thank you all for participating in that poll. And with that, we're going to get into our workshop. Um, now that we've got you thinking a little bit about the environment and healthy living, um, and I'm going to stop my screen share so that I can introduce our speaker for today. Um, with us from Fortis, Alberta, we have Kelly Weatherall. He's been with Fortis, Alberta for 30 years and he works as a senior maintenance planner. Uh, he's also been a member of the Sarsi Fish and Game Association, which is uh, the non-for-profit which actually provided the materials for the bird houses that you will get a chance to win. And he's been with a member with them for 20 years, over 20 years, and he's also an avid outdoor person who likes being involved in conservation projects similar to this. He likes hunting and fishing and he also likes woodworking. So he knows um, he likes this type of stuff that we're doing today. He's passionate about it just as all of all of us are. So uh, thank you for being here Kelly and with that um, I will pass it over to you. I can see your screen. It looks good. Okay thanks Babylon for the introduction. Uh, hello my name is Kelly Weatherall. And I'll be speaking today about building some artificial habitats for bees and birds. As a member of Sarsi Fishing Game Association, I've taken an interest in creating artificial habitats to help those creatures that could use some help from us humans. I would like to first start with what is called a bee condo or bee hotel. So why do we do this? So the bee condo provides a nesting location for solitary bees to lay eggs to hatch to become the next generation of bees. There are over 370 different native bees in Alberta. A solitary bee does not produce honey or wax, so they do not build a hive or have a queen bee. A solitary bee does not have a pollen basket to carry pollen. This makes them a more impactful pollinator. And it is said that a single solitary red mason bee is equivalent to 120 worker bees when it comes to pollinating. So pollination occurs when pollen is moved from one flower to the next and allows the flower to develop into a fruit, vegetable, or seed. In this slide, I have a Fortis Alberta cross arm that is four inches by four inches, and they will be seven to nine feet in length. There's also holes in them where the cross arm was attached to the power pole and where the hardware attached to support the power lines. In this example, you can see I was able to get six 12 inch blocks that were cut from the cross arm. So holes are then drilled into the blocks. So you've got to be sure not to drill completely through and you should be able to get 25 or more 
two to 12 millimeter holes. Notice that the blocks are cut at 45 degree angles for the roof. It is very important to clean out the holes of any sawdust, as well as file away any splinters of woods that are blocking the holes. The holes can be at, of any pattern. The holes should be as deep as the drill bit, but again, not all the way through the block. If a hole is accidentally drilled all the way through, the rest of the block is still fine. The holes can be either in the front for B access, or they could be in the back, provided an entrance space is created. In this slide here, I've shown a view here is the entrance, as well as the opposite side that I enclose in. And I make the use of half inch or three quarter inch spacers is required. And this, this is the, the form I prefer. I prefer the access from the back as it protects and shelters the holes from the wind and predators. B condo hotel uh, should be exposed to the south or southeast to benefit from the warm sun. Installation needs to be to a solid structure such that it's not sway in the wind or be knocked over by people or animals. And it should be a, meter, a minimum of one meter off the ground. Near the top of a shed or barn overhang is perfect. And also if you can get in near an area where there's lots of pollen and nectar plants, such as an alfalfa field, fruit trees or large gardens, those make great locations. So after you've installed your bee condo, a solitary bee will lay an egg with some pollen and it will hatch the following year. So activity to the bee condo will be sparse as there's no need for the bees to build honey supplies or return to feed bee larvae. So it will not be as busy as a honey bee, beehive or a birdhouse. So do not think it's not working because there are not 10 or more bees constantly at the bee condo. The bees will be in and they'll be out. Birdhouses. So again, some of the Western mountain bluebirds and a tree swallow. Uh, so why do we build birdhouses? So birds like these, bluebirds or swallows, use cavities to nest in. As human development continues, people tend to clear out the habitats such as little trees that would have cavities the birds would use. As well, other birds have been introduced from other continents that compete with our native birds, such as starling and, and English sparrows. So the Sarsi Fish and Game Association is providing material to construct a birdhouse. Over 50% of the materials used to build the birdhouse is salvaged from new home construction. So the wood was destined for a landfill or a fire pit. So the wood will be cut to size and assembly is all that is required. You will need to drill three small holes to attach pieces with screws or nails. Here I have a picture of the birdhouse pieces required to assemble a birdhouse. So you have two side pieces, uh, the front piece with the bird entrance, uh, back piece, the roof, inner roof, and the inside bottom of the birdhouse. First thing you'll need to do is construct the inside support and it'll look like the number seven. Your second step will be to attach the sides. Here, just put in a few screws. Everything lines up, should line up very nice. Uh, the next step is to put the bottom piece such that there's adequate space for the front piece with the bird entrance. So the space we're talking about here matches the thickness of the front piece with the bird hole. So here you'll notice that the front piece is flush with the sides is what you want. And you also want a small space at the top. This will allow for airflow in the birdhouse so it doesn't get too hot for the birds. Here in this slide, there's an example of how you can see it's flush the full length. This is what you want to see when you put the birdhouse together. It shows that you have that inner piece at the right location. Here I've shown with it a little higher and this is what you don't want. And in this example with the front piece being higher, it means your inner piece is too low towards the bottom and you need to move it up. Conversely, if you put the front on and it sinks too far in, that means it's too far up and you need to move it back. So the 
the inside piece does slide up and down. And once you get it to the right spot, you can uh, attach it to its location. Yeah. Yeah. We can all watch. So here we have. Uh, he gets tired. Where we attach the, the front piece. So here we need to pre drill the hole for the screw through the side and into the front piece. If you don't pre drill the hole, just placing the screw through the side and into the front piece will split the, the front piece. And if it splits the front piece, it won't attach very well and your birdhouse may not stay together. So it's very important that you drill the hole for this screw here, as well as on the other side, another screw. And it's important that the screws are put in a place such that they're at the bottom of the inner piece. That way it allows the front to hinge. If your inner piece is on this side of where you put the screw, like say if you tried to put the screw up here, it won't hinge the front, this piece will catch the inside piece. So very important inner piece, screw hole just below it. The third hole you'll need to drill is for the nail that will hold the front piece inside. So the hole should be on an angle such that the nail can be placed in to hold it. And this way it keeps the, the front piece from hinging open when you don't want it to. So when the birds are nesting, for example. Here's a picture of the finished birdhouse with the roof attached. Here you can see the nail, it's on the angle. If you were to pull on the front of the birdhouse, it would open. With the nail removed, you're able to hinge the front open. And in this case, you're able to use two long screws to help with the installation onto a fence post. So here you will want some three inch screws to screw through the birdhouse onto a fence post or onto a fence wherever you're installing your birdhouse. It is fine to decorate your birdhouse as you see fit, but do not attach ribbons or things that would move in the wind as this will deter the birds from accessing the birdhouse. So for your birdhouse installation, it should be four to eight feet from the ground. Uh, pick a location where a cat cannot sit and prey on the birds. So for example, a corral fence is a poor location. Uh, in an area with open space, so you shouldn't place it within trees and try and stay at least 10 meter from a group of trees. Also consider not putting in a location that horses or cows can rub on them and knock them down. Uh, if you're putting them on a fence, uh, the roadside of the fence is best if animals are kept inside the fence. So after you've installed your birdhouse and uh, it's been used, you'll need to clean it out once a year, once in the fall, once in the winter. Uh, a cleaned out birdhouse will attract birds to re keep reusing your birdhouse, as opposed to if you leave the nesting materials inside from the previous season. So we ask ourselves, why do we build bee condos and birdhouses? Well, bees provide an invaluable service in pollinating the food people and other animals eat, as well as allow plants to reproduce. Bees are the most common pollinator in the world. Birds help control bug numbers as they eat bugs and in particular mosquitoes, and they need our help to thrive. It is said that 90% of bluebirds are born in a birdhouse and not a natural cavity. The mosquito is the most common pest in the world. Not only are they a nuisance, but they can pass along diseases harmful to people and animals when they bite. Mosquitoes date back as far as 400 million years to the Triassic period. So essentially they were here when dinosaurs were around. So they are very resilient. So I just like to kind of in closing say that people take up more space in this world and we need to deal with climate change. It is important to build artificial habitats for bees and birds such that they can continue to strive on our planets. Your building and maintaining of artificial habitats such as bee condos and birdhouses will help to ensure they continue into the future. I encourage you to look for opportunities to use your resources you have on hand and relationships you have to create value in enhancing our environment. I am very excited as an employee of Fortis Alberta and a member of Sarsi Fish and Game Association to be able to partner with 4-H to expand the deployment of bee condos and birdhouses. 
I would like to thank everyone for listening to my message today. And I would like to leave you with this quote. Do not limit your measure of success for the day by the harvest reaped, but also by the seeds you have planted. So I've seen this quote on TV and felt it was very applicable to our partnership to not only build artificial habitats, but to encourage everyone in our efforts to improve our environment. So uh, I am available for questions if anyone uh, should. Yeah, if any of you have any questions, thank you, Kelly. That was that was awesome. Um, and if you have any questions, now is the time to ask. Uh, you can type them in the chat or you can unmute yourself. Um, first, I just I have a couple that were asked in the chat that I want to ask Kelly. Um, does it matter where in Al? Oh, sorry, I froze for a second. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Okay. Does it matter where in Alberta? Um, can you be all over Alberta and have these houses and be condos? Or is there only specific places in Alberta they work? I, I believe bees are everywhere. So any place where there's there's plants with pollen, there will be bees. Great. And then I see I see Alicia has a question. I think if she raised her hand, Alicia, do you have a question? You can unmute yourself. Yes. Um, can the beehive and the birdhouse go next to each other? They sure can. Uh, the birds, like the bluebirds and the swallows, they mainly eat mosquitoes, crickets, grasshoppers. Uh, I don't believe they'll be overly interested in bees. And again, with the bee condos being for solitary bees, I believe those bees will be in and out. They won't, they won't hang around a lot, per se. So it would be fine to keep them right close together, like a few feet apart. I think that would be fine. Awesome. That's nice to know. Thanks, Alicia. Um, I, another question I saw is, do you have to make a nest in the birdhouse? No, that's the nice part about it. The, the birds themselves, they will haul all the material that they need to be to make their nest. So they will haul in grass. They will haul in uh, string if they find it. Uh, swallows love to put in feathers from other birds that they find on the ground into their nests. It's actually quite interesting to check out a nest after the end of the season to see how active it is and what they push, put in there. Awesome. Um, Wyatt and Julia, you have a question or a tip for bees maybe? Or is that you? Maybe that's a different person. But sorry, Wyatt and Julia. Do you have a question though? No, I don't. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, that's okay. Um, we have someone, Wyatt says he has a tip for bees. What is your tip, Wyatt? Well, um, we had bees this winter. They just migrated into one of our wells. And so we tried to keep them alive and everything, but between the freezing and the mice, um, they went down pretty quickly. So I would advise keeping them warm during the winter and um, keeping it without mice. Okay, yeah, thanks, Wyatt. That's great. Do you have anything about like temperature where you should put like in relation to sun or anything, Kelly, maybe? Uh, yes, definitely. You want a place to be condo where it will see some sun. Uh, to me, what I was quite found quite surprising was that the, the egg that the bee lays, it takes a year for it to develop and come out as a bee the following year. You know, like mosquitoes in three weeks, they go from egg to larvae to adult you know, and they keep reproducing through the year, whereas the bees, they only lay the egg and they come out the following year. So you, you want to have the bee condo someplace where it will be warm and get a lot of sun so that that larvae has a chance to truly develop. Um, awesome. Okay, so another question from Caitlin is, are uh, there any materials we can put out for the birds to build their house with? Well, you betcha. Yeah. To be honest with you, as a hunter, I usually uh, keep some feathers from some of the ducks or geese that I've harvested, and I love putting them on the grass. I kid you not, I could put out a handful of feathers, and within 15 minutes, they will all be gone. Every bird in the neighborhood comes and picks them up. That's so awesome. If you, so if you find that you uh, have some spare feathers from something, whether it be cleaning chickens or <laughs> as such, but put them out, they will pick them up. That's great. Um, should you take out the bird's nest after they finished with the house? Yes. So I'd say anytime after Labor Day, it would be good to clean out the birdhouse. And to me, I find it's easier to do it when it's nicer out. If you wait till, say, this time of year in March, 
still a lot of snow. It's still a little cold, but uh, bluebirds are one of the first birds that come back. And I truly believe if there's material in the house, the birds will think it's occupied and move on. Whereas if it's empty, they'll figure it's available. Awesome. Um, Hazel, do you have a question? About the feathers, what if the feathers had like lice or disease on them? Shouldn't you be careful about that? Uh, for sure, yes. But uh, to be, if you, if you collected your feathers in the fall and you put them out in the spring, usually lice or something as such won't live in the feathers over that period. But if you're using feathers freshly from something, that's possible. Uh, Eugene, do you have a question? Eugene and Charlotte? No. Um, does anyone else have any questions? Wait a sec, Charlotte has a question. Okay, Charlotte. What? Charlotte, what's your question? It's okay, Charlotte, if you, you can ask it. Mm. Charlotte, I forget what I was going to say. That's okay. okay. If you remember, type it in the chat and I can ask Kelly later for you if you want. Okay. Um, so if you, if any of you have more questions, um, type them in the chat. I just, before I let you all go, um, I really, I want us all to say a big thank you to Kelly for coming on here and doing this workshop with us. So if you guys can all unmute yourselves and tell Kelly, thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Thank you Thank you. guys are all very welcome. Uh, Thank you. I look forward to uh, building a whole bunch of bee condos and birdhouses going forward. Yeah, it's going to be great. I'm excited. So the last thing, sorry, before you guys go, I just want to show you where the Google Classroom is and um, how what you're going to do with the assignment for a chance to win the materials to build a birdhouse and a bee condo. So we have an assignment in the Google Classroom that you can submit after this. Um, I'm going to share my screen quickly for you. Okay. Um, can you, sorry, I'm frozen. Okay, can you all see the classroom now or is it just showing the presentation? We can see the classroom. Perfect, okay, perfect, thank you. Classroom. Thank you. So here, here's our classroom and this went live at five o'clock, this um, activity. So um, right here, is the activity with the instructions and what you're going to do if you can now maybe you can look up to me but we have um, these sheets right here that you'll be able to download they're attached to the assignment right here and it's a blue uh, mini blueprint of the birdhouse and maybe you saw in kelly's presentation but some of the birdhouses are decorated really awesome so what we're going to get you guys to do is decorate your birdhouse the way you'd want to decorate it if you put it out in it's your rich. yard or, or somewhere around you. So you can decorate it. Um, just make sure, like he said, that you're not putting any sparkly things or hanging anything off of it that could scare the birds away. Um, and also the reason we don't decorate the bee condos is that bees um, don't like their houses to be decorated. They like old wood, um, sometimes burned, and they don't like the the paint or anything that you put on it. Um, so we don't decorate the bee condos. But after you decorated your house um, or your house on the piece of paper, your plan, um, you'll go out into your yard or out to wherever you're planning on putting out your birdhouse and your bee condo and take a picture of where you're planning on putting them. So um, wherever that is, if it's your fence or uh, maybe it's at your grandparents' house, it, wherever you want to put these once you've built them, take a picture of where your birdhouse location will be and your bee, house, bee condo location will be. And then you're going to put all, all three pictures, your drawing and your two outside pictures onto the assignment and submit it and it's due next Wednesday so everyone who submitted there will be entered into a draw and then we're going to give away 
um, generously donated by Fortis um, Alberta. They've donated the materials for the bee condos. And um, we've got the birdhouse materials from Sarsi Fish and Game Association. So thank you to them for donating it. Um, and yeah, you'll get the materials and then you can build it yourself, put it up and take a picture um, for us. So make sure you go do that right after this. Um, the only other thing I want to say before I let you guys go is that in the email tomorrow, um, there will be a feedback form for you to fill out for not only this session, but all of the sessions that have happened. And if you have any ideas for more sessions that you'd like to see, um, you can fill it out in the feedback form. So uh, keep an eye out for the email tomorrow. If it goes to your parents, make sure you bug your parents to let you see the email or to fill out the feedback form and to get into the classroom. Uh, so if you guys have any more questions or anything, you can ask it now, but if not, um, Maybe as you go, you can turn on your mic and do a little bee buzzing sound and leave the with the sound of a bee. A bee goodbye. <laughs> Bye, everybody. <laughs> 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 I'm, using a, I'm using an electric motor as my bee. Thank you.